Wonderful. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning to those who follow us from where it's morning. Good evening for others. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, be able to coordinate for a moment this wonderful panel where after these great talks now by uh, Carminda and Boaventura, we will be able to discuss for brief moments the world source of form and the question we have for today, since we have very short time, it's very simple. It kind of flows from what we heard from Carminda and Boaventura. And the question is, who rules in the world social form? And traditionally, like Boaventura was now paying attention to the fact that I think you emphasized that we need a deliberative process. And there's been this idea from the beginning that the world social form is a little bit like a square without an owner, as was said by some of the Brazilian founding fathers. And whether the attempt to avoid structures, to avoid decision-making mechanisms, creates something that, for example, some feminist scholars traditionally have called tyranny of structurelessness, where we pretend that there are no structures and everybody decides then we wouldn't have clarity on who decides, and then we have a problem. There clearly is a problem, but what is the problem? Who rules? Does somebody rule? And should somebody else rule? So uh, these simple uh, questions here, we have uh, Marisa Holmes, who's been very active in Occupy movements in the United States, in the World Social Forum process, and also a distinguished uh, filmmaker, activist, and I think agitator is one word I've seen about you seeing some of the impressive stuff you've been doing. We have Carminda McLaren that you've already heard here, uh, who got her doctorate at the Uni University of Montreal and is president of Cataliso and a very active member in the World Social Forum, Boaventura, you just heard, who's a longtime director of Center for Social Studies in Coimbra, and I would dare to say one of the most important and innovative social scientists alive in the world today, who's been very active in the World Social Forum, and who's been shaking the forum recently to tell us, okay, you need to get, we need to get, people need to get their act together, to have decision-making structures and start becoming more deliberative. Thomas Valgren, my dear colleague at the University of Helsinki, professor of philosophy, Gambian activist since like forever, um, I think kind of perhaps represents a position where, you know, um, no strict decision-making structures should be made, but I'm actually not very sure about that. So, Marisa, what do you say? Do you want to reflect briefly on this to start with? And welcome from New York, I assume. Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn uh, right now. I've lived here for 10 years and uh, I can reflect a little bit on you know my own <laughs> involvement in the World Social Forum, the social forum process. I mean, I I was invited in, in 2013 um, to participate in Tunis. You know, there was this uh, first gathering in Tunis after the new movements of 2011. And a lot of discussion ensued in Occupy in 15M circles at the time. Um, and basically I, I was part of Agora 99, um, a conference in Madrid. Um, and some of the people who were part of that track went to Florence for the European Social Forum and we decided to occupy the European Social Forum and <laughs> open up um, basically a, an assembly space uh, where we could also make decisions. You know, I, I think it's really a false uh, distinction to make that, <clears throat> you know, you have horizontality on one hand and decision making on the other. Obviously we made decisions um, in these spaces about debt and democracy and what we, you know, wanted um, in the world. And so we really, you know, we took over the space and then we opened up this, this parallel process within the European Social Forum. And, and actually people were, were very um, open to the possibility of that and like, you know, allowed us to take the stage. A lot of the 15M um, participants in particular were able to sort of shepherd that process forward because they had a lot of facilitation experience. 
so coming out of that, um, we realized, you know, we, we have um, our own sort of networks and experiences. And so we'll, we'll take that to Tunis. So we, we occupied the World Social Forum <laughs> um, and had a space within the, the climate space uh, which seems very, very important, you know, if you're thinking about take, taking up territory, reclaiming that territory, um, you know, why not start with the, the climate space? And it was also uh, sponsored in part by Petrobras. So there was this critique that we were making about the, uh, the financial structure of the social forum. Uh, we liberated tents um, that we found from, you know, USAID and the Saudi Arabian government. You know, they actually were branded like Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which was quite, quite interesting um, to, to find. So we appropriated all of this and, and created the space um, without, you know, hardly any resources. Um, and because a lot of the participants had language skills, we were able to translate um, into, I think, five, six different languages. I mean, there was Italian, Spanish, Arabic, like um, proper Arabic, and then uh, Tunisian dialect. A lot of the students from the university came and participated, which was which was amazing to see. Um, so we, you know, we just got to know each other and had workshops and skill shares and. Um, these sessions and uh, Comenda was also <laughs> involved in that. And um, yeah, and then we took some of that energy out into the, the streets beyond the, the university um, and created a space along the Avenue Habib Bourguiba, which was, you know, the site of the, um, well, the January 14th revolution. Obviously the, the real revolution started in, in December, but, um, you know, people took that, that uh, momentum and then occupied the Kasva and there was a standoff at the Avenue Hibi Bourguiba. And so it became like a very symbolic center for, for the Tunisian revolution um, in front of the, the Minister of the Interior, you know, which is the uh, secret police essentially of, of Ben Ali um, and the RCD party um, and which you know, continues to this day. And, you know, we can, we can talk about the sort of transition that happened. Um, but yeah, essentially we, you know, we had this whole parallel uh, mobilization within occupying 15M circles and local activists in Tunis um, and, and tried to present an alternative, um, which ended in us uh, even occupying the IOC meeting itself uh, with Chico Whitaker there sort of observing the, the activities, uh, which is which is a lot of fun, you know, like sort of rearranging the whole space, creating a circle rather than like a long banquet table and um, you know, trying to, to imagine what a different form could look like. So I don't know, uh, just to give you some, some background on that, I wrote a, a little bit about it at the time, um, but I, I think it's really important to, you know, integrate lessons learned from these new movements, um, not uncritically uh, also, but um, to think about, you know, what, what we can do now, um, because it really is important to build these international connections and solidarity, so. Excellent, Marisa. Thank you. I remember the enthusiasm was then like people were saying, okay, World Social Forum is so last season. And then seeing some Occupy activists and Tunisian Arab Revolution activists sort of meeting each other on that space. I remember that was very empowering to watch, even though I'm not so, uh, I, I don't know so much about it. But I see Thomas here looking like uh, you are going to say something. So should we have deliberation? Or should we be an open space to use a very old and traditional dichotomy here? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Boa. Thanks, uh, all. Um, you see, I think uh, what kind of power are we talking about when we talk about the World Social Forum? And I think at the center, and I think it was there what Boa said, at the center of the World Social Forum is the power of an idea which meets certain political needs of the present. Uh, the needs are uh, the overwhelming forces of global capitalism, if I use that word, uh, how to how to uh, stand up against it and how to transform. That need is felt uh, by many in so many places, but the analysis people have are very diverse. Uh, the capacity to react together is not there yet. So the need I see is the need to share stories, the need to exchange ideas, the need to reflect and come together in order to be able to join hands better. So there's a need to search together and that need is felt so strongly and the World Social Forum has the power of attraction. It's true it was stronger 15 years back to attract people from various corners. Devo, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, fine. So attract people from various corners to come together to uh, meet this pressing need we feel, all of us. So how to, so in that sense, I think the 
idea of the open space where people meet to share and exchange and learn together is at the heart of it. And that idea cannot be owned by anyone. And we do have lots of people. I mean, the, 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 the story we just heard about occupying, occupying the World Social Forum. I think many of us have been occupying the forum, the Nepal Social Forum, the Asia Social Forum, the Finnish Social Forum, the Tampere Social Forum in, in small town in Finland. So there's no centralist ownership of the idea. The idea is alive. It gives power. Uh, the other thing which I think is working uh, already is the assemblies, mm, the assemblies of social movements where proposals for joint action are made. And those do bring people together for joint action. Um, now, whether something can be added, and I thanks Devo for, for, for giving me a special role, um, but I'm not claiming that role. You know, if something can happen uh, with centralized uh, decisions, if more people can be brought together, uh, I'm happy. My sense of it is that we are not there yet. My sense is that assemblies uh, are the best tool we can have at the moment. So I, I, I fight for that, but also fight for divergence. I fight for for the um, decentralized ownership, which I think is already there. And I'm really happy, happy about that. It's not as strong as I would like it to be, but it's the best uh, game in town. So that's why I'm I'm so happy to see you and happy to try to contribute my little uh, with my, my effort to the building of the movement. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Thomas, and and good stuff. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing. Next, I give the floor to Carminda and then to Boaventura and hearing what they say about whether we are there yet to have this. What I believe Boaventura was suggesting about the assemblies, just to add, some people do think that the role of the assemblies was played down in the World Social Forum a little bit. At the beginning, it was like mm -hmm. our, I think, a dear friend of many of us, Samir Amin, I remember chatting with him several times, like he was saying, it's a perfect legitimate trick to have the open forum mm -hmm. and then the assemblies that do all those things that perhaps Boaventura was suggesting as something. But now the Assembly of Social Movements is not what it used to be. And and therefore, uh, it cannot play the trick that Samir Amin, for example, was suggesting it could. But uh, Carminda, so what are your thoughts? We already heard your wonderful speech a few minutes ago, but to add to this conversation. From Nepal, right? From, from Montreal, the snowy Montreal. <laughs> Thank you, Teivu. Um, well, I guess uh, the, what uh, Thomas was saying, uh, this need of uh, searching together uh, how to act in this world, uh, that uh, these urgent actions that need to be done today to face what is going on uh, that is terrible all around. Uh, this is the, the main question, how can we act uh, at a global level that is uh, rooted on the local level also. Uh, so what I think it is really interesting about the uh, idea of the World Social Forum is to put forward the plurality, because this is what we are in the world. We are different, we are plural. Um, it's There is no one uh, homogeneous uh, thing we can come out with uh, today. And actually the problems are so diverse that <laughs> we definitely need to address them from different perspectives. And this was what uh, charmed me uh, into uh, the World Social Forum. Uh, of course, uh, there are many paradoxes, actually many contradictions that uh, go through uh, the World Social Forum and actually through many other spaces that we invested, like Global Square uh, with uh, Marisa that she was uh, speaking about, and uh, how uh, at the at the end the ideals and the practices are different. <laughs> this is a fact. So how do we deal with this plurality, these uh, contradictions that are that we are facing? This is for me the question. Um, and when we are asking who rules, well. Uh, that's a good question. And actually, the, the question also is for me how to listen to those who don't rule, how to hear the voices are, that are not uh, coming out of universities. How do we hear the voices of those who are experts on are their own context and they're living in the streets or in uh, uh, very problematic situations all around the world? And uh, Boaventura speaks a lot about uh, epistemologies of the South and uh, opening our minds uh, on this 
and, and the, the importance of hearing uh, different voices. So for me, um, also the, the question is, are we talking about the International Council or are we talking about the WSF? Uh, this is another question, because if we ask who's ruling the WSF, I would be tempted to say no one, because when uh, the WSF is going on and so many people are proposing activities and stuff like that, uh, well, they are doing their own thing and they're addressing their own matters and uh, show, sharing their own voices. But if we're talking about the International Council, maybe it, it would be interesting to continue asking this question, who rules and who should rule and how, should it, how decisions should be made. Uh, these are all questions that need to be addressed <laughs> again and again. And uh, to finish, I would just con go with Marisa and ask uh, and say there is a need for action. So what is that we are going to do now that we are in the middle of contradictions, paradoxes, uh, urgent needs? Uh, who, how to li continue listening to those that are not having voices uh, like we are having now? This is my, my big question. Excellent. Thank you. And um, I think people, who, if they want to read and learn more about how to think about paradoxes within the world social forum, Carminda's new doctoral thesis that has just, just appeared in French has uh, a lot on the concept of the paradox in the world social forum. So next, uh, Boaventura. So we've heard that if I read Thomas currently, for example, that we are not there yet. Let's not go so fast. Let's, you know, let's wait. You know, we've only waited 20 years. No, no, waiting, no waiting. But we are not there yet. 50 years. <laughs> and, 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 and then the, how, how to occupy the forum and, and provide this action, give power to the powerless that Marisa and now Carminda were emphasizing. So, um, well, I think this is the type of discussion that we should have more and more. And unfortunately, uh, in the International Council, uh, that just Carminda mentioned, usually it is impossible because uh, it is more about insults than about. Uh, you know, recent arguments. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not good at insulting anyone. I like to, to have recent arguments, but we have been attacked of being, uh, you know, anti-Semitist, uh, we have been attacked of everything uh, and subversives and so on. Why? Because if no one rules the own social forum, uh, if in fact it's such an open space that nobody can possibly own it, why since 2006 this is the question because the feminists are right there is a structureless structure highly structured power how does it uh, manifest itself veto power is one of them second secret meetings parallel to our meetings we have already discovered many secret meetings among some people in the international council around some basically Brazilian group that in fact owns or thinks they own. One, one of the guys was uh, interrogated by someone, was asked someone in Salvador in 2018, he said, he said the, the world, the responded, the World Social Forum is me, like this. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> there are people that think they are the fathers, there are no mothers, right? They are the fathers of the World Social Forum, and that's why they have a legitimacy. This is a fact of life. And even now, if you were a little bit more inside the organization of this virtual forum, so the plenary sessions, the way they were formulated, believe me, there was uh, lots of strategies there that won't ever be clear or public to the people so that some uh, issues will not be raised and so on. For, for this yet. There is no time. Well, mm. so let's go from the right? studio, live studio. What do folks there say about our time? Well, we're we're no. listening very attentively. It's an important discussion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're we're listening with great attention. It's a it's a very important discussion, uh, and well, and we we want to continue this discussion in the plenary. So if you uh, can continue this after 
uh, 6.20 Central European time, we would be very, very pleased to have you there. I'm not sure if Boa can join us. I would be very glad if he could.